Hey, what's up guys? My name is Dion. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. You're watching Reptiliatus. Sorry about my stuffy nose and messed up voice. I am pretty sick right now and just kind of getting over a chest cold essentially. So please bear with me. In today's video, I have some really bad news to give you all, but it has a solution and I think things are going to be okay. A couple of weeks ago, I noticed that one of my giant Peruvian white leg -like centipedes is, well, sick. She's not doing well. I noticed that she's been developing little black spots on her body, which are pretty well a clear sign that she is suffering from a disease called mycosis, which is caused by a fungal infection. If left untreated, this is a pretty deadly disease. It basically breaks down and damages the animal's tissue. It's not contagious to people. There are technically forms of fungal disease that are considered mycosis that people can get, but this one is not going to just suddenly transmit over to me, thank God. However, I do not want my animal to be harmed by this illness and I'm going to do everything I can to change things and to help them. I'd also like to give major thanks to Andrew Buchan. I think I'm pronouncing his last name right. He left a really really helpful comment on my last video or I guess my first video about these animals and he really cautioned that I should keep them drier um, so that's what I'm going to do it's really tricky because I went online and I researched these animals and frankly there isn't a whole lot of information on their care I mean they're really expensive animals so you don't want to just be you know winging it either I think the best information I found was on arachnoboards from like 2018 the way people are talking about keeping them is relatively moist just like some of the other more tropical species of scolopendra I mean I even have this book and I've done a lot of reading in it and Yes, it's a bit of an older book. It's a wonderful read and it has a lot of helpful information on the animals. But even in that book, it doesn't necessarily insist or imply that this species should be kept dry. So I kind of don't blame myself, but I mean, ultimately, yes, I blame myself. It wasn't necessarily easy finding out that I'm doing things wrong. So time to correct things. I think the misconception is that people think that they're coming from a jungle or rainforest type environment when apparently according to these few friends that have assisted me they're coming from more of a grassland type environment needs a lot more cross ventilation in the enclosure and a drier substrate with continuous access to water whenever they need to drink. So what we're going to do is rehouse the animal and we're going to keep it very dry and what that's going to do is hopefully kill off the mycosis. The damage tissue will remain as such until the centipede molts again. So what it does is prevents it from spreading further because it's not conducive to the fungal infection spreading. It's too dry and it allows the animal to be in conditions that are more ideal to its health until it's ready to molt again. And what it should do then is shed off that damaged tissue and repair itself with the next molt. So that's kind of the action plan here. I have heard or seen a few articles of people that are like using fungal creams and such, but I don't feel comfortable with that because I can't imagine them being safe for the animal to accidentally consume. Centipedes are really clean animals and they groom themselves a lot. And I don't know what the adverse effects would be if she was to try and groom herself and accidentally consume some of that cream. So we're gonna go with the dry them out method and hope for the best. So let's go ahead and see the lovely lady now and I will show you the clear tell symptoms and signs that have been getting progressively worse. All right, guys. So here is the lovely girl. You can see her enclosure. I've dumped out the water dish. Her hide is down here. Now, if you take a good look at her right away, you can see the mycosis. So we're just gonna gently go in here with a paintbrush. I wanna be able to, you girl, you okay? I wanna be able to show you guys. You can see the damage on the one antennae. There's some black. Looking on the sides, you can see on the animal there, there's a few mycosis spots. That's a really bad one. Now that leg was already gone when I first obtained the animal, but I think there's a few legs here that are getting worse. So I, I remember I saw one that the tip of the leg actually had some black on it. So in any case, we are going to remove her from this enclosure and place her in a safe place and dry this place out. See, there you go, some pretty bad mycosis. Oh gosh, poor girl. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Let's move her out and replace the substrate with something more dry. I think the most simple way to remove the animal from the enclosure is by just using a paper towel roll. Come on, girl. 
You're really making this hard for me, eh? Simple process, come on. But, can we get her in? Well, if we can get her up like that, that works too. Hi, hun. There we go. Oops. Sorry, girl. I'm gonna get a lid on her quickly. Push the arms right out. Let's have a better look at her. You can see that there's definitely some mycosis going on there. Ah, I can't really see it on the sides because you look at her dorsally, it's not as bad. But yeah, it's not ideal to say the least. So we'll nip this in the butt, get her to molt, and hopefully I'll have a positive update to give next time. We take her water dish out. And this is her wooden hide that she likes to spend a lot of time under. So we'll remove that as well. And now feeling this substrate, like it's not that moist anymore. I haven't had to add water to this for a long time. That's also because there isn't a whole lot of ventilation. So what I'm going to do though, is give her one corner like this, that's about this moist and everything else is going to be removed and replaced with dry substrate. So this whole side will remove, this side will be there for her. So if she does want to have like a moist retreat, she has that option. So that's going to stay like that. And then we're just going to shovel and scoop this all out and place it into a garbage bag. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. We're just literally going to scoop all the dirt out. All right, guys, so we have this area and what we're going to do is just add a very small, thin layer of dry substrate. And I've mixed some dry cocoa husk with a little bit of the exoterra forest bark. Now, yes, you probably know that these animals would prefer deeper substrate to burrow in, but that's not what's important here. Right now, we need to focus on getting this animal treated for her illness. So maintaining a lower humidity, providing the proper substrate as long as it's really dry, that's what's important here. So she has dry substrate and then more humid substrate if she needs it and that area is a little deeper and there's again the shelter but other than that she's not allowed to have moist substrate we want her to be dry we don't want her getting too moist because we want to kill off the fungus so there we go guys the animal's enclosure is now quite dry as you can see the only thing left to do is give her her water dish we'll go ahead and add that fill it And then we can add the lovely lady now who appears to be grooming. Cute. Hi, beautiful. How are you? Hi, you okay? You ready to come out? Here's the toilet paper roll. So we get her to climb right in. Come on. Easy peasy, Sosie. She'll climb in. You've got her literally the length of this <laughs> it's an interesting sound all right hun you ready you gonna come out it's okay there you go there we go good job girl and she's already exploring good girl Look at that animal, it's so elegant. Just like millions and millions of years of evolution. Everything's gonna be okay. You're gonna feel better soon. Yeah, you're gonna feel better. Now, I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. If you wanna know the way into a centipede's heart, it's food. Give them something to eat and they'll love you forever. They'll treasure you, yeah. Hey, hon, you ready? Oh, you got it. You got it. Yum, yum, yum. Ooh. Look at that. Took her like two seconds to just get in there and start eating it. This is a great angle. She's like up on the wall, so we can really zoom in on there and watch what she's doing so long as she doesn't slide down the edge.
see how she just guides the flesh down impressive look at how she gets in there and just manipulates everything to move towards her mouth all right guys so i think that enclosure is pretty well set up now it's time to check on the other animal because obviously if this one was suffering from mycosis being kept in the same conditions as the other we want to correct the other animal's husbandry conditions to prevent any mycosis so the second animal is in here she's definitely started coming out a bit more but the reason she's in hiding is because she just molted recently now you can't quite tell by looking at her just yet but this centipede recently molted and consumed the molt as well. She is looking fine. I think she did have some mycosis, but it looks like it's all gone, I want to say. So she's going to be looking for a meal soon, but I think we're going to rehouse her too. I don't want to stress her out. I noticed she molted probably a, two weeks ago, so I think she's hard enough for us to gently coax her out and do the rehousing. I just don't want to wait too long while she's like soft bodied and risk her getting infected with mycosis. But look at that beautiful little animal. You can see that the coloration isn't quite there because she is not fully hardened. So what we're gonna do is actually just leave her be. Um, I don't want to disturb her more than I have. I have noticed that it is a lot drier in this enclosure than the other females enclosure. So I'm sure that has something to do with the mycosis on the other animal and not on this one but we're going to remove this clump of substrate here while she's in here and then just replace like an l sort of from here to there all right let's add that dry substrate i'm gonna give her her water dish it's gonna go there and there we go awesome guys so there they are you saw my one female and there was the other one all right guys there you have it i hope you enjoyed my video obviously that is some bitter news but i'm on top of it and i'm gonna be treating it and i will take you along for the i guess treatment journey if you will give you updates i don't expect anything to change because as i said those physical symptoms will not change until the animal molts so all we're doing is inhibiting the fungi's ability to spread further so that when she molts it'll go away so again update will come when she molts next i hope you guys enjoyed this video nonetheless or learned something it's always a pleasure i also want to take the time to thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart truly for 40,000 subscribers we're already like at 40,060 or something like that but 40,000 of you are following me and i'm so grateful and appreciative so thank you so much guys on to 50,000. Let's see what we can do. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe down below and ding my notification bell there to know when the next video is coming out. My name is Dion, you're watching Reptiliatus, and I greatly look forward to seeing you guys in another video again soon. Take care. See you guys.